Well, hello there, HW here, and thank you so much for watching Tone Junkie TV. Uh, like a lot of you guys, I play guitar uh, on Sunday mornings at a church uh, near my home. Uh, and I'm out here in Nashville, and uh, in a very rare occurrence, there's no music up on Planning Center right now. Uh, so here I am, Saturday afternoon, no idea what we're going to play tomorrow. Um, and I, I say it's a rare occurrence, um, but you know, it happens every maybe three months or so. Uh, basically, there's a number of worship leaders at my church uh, who are songwriters and have written stuff for Bethel and Elevation Worship and uh, you know Jesus Culture and all them. And sometimes they end up having to travel and do some stuff, and they kind of forget to pick the music. And so what's going to happen is tomorrow we're going to walk in, and um, they're going to name three of their songs that they know very well. And the rest of us are hopefully going to know those well, and they're going to throw out a key and some numbers, and it's going to be up to us to follow along. As a guitar player, I might whip out my phone and listen real quick to uh, to a, a melody line or something if I can't remember it. Uh, but, but most of all, we'll stick with good church, you know, kind of familiar songs. But a lot of you might find yourself in this position. It's Saturday afternoon. You don't know what you're playing tomorrow. And I recently got a Helix LT in the mail. And uh, I was going to do some videos on it, but I thought, what a perfect video to uh, just throw together a rig that I'm really going to use tomorrow morning uh, on the Line 6 Helix LT. Um, and just throw it together. I don't know what songs are going to be, so I've just got to go for kind of like a generic praise and worship sound. I'm going to play this guitar. I'm going to play this uh, Sir Alt T Pro, but I'm going to show you how easy it is to throw together um, sort of a, a sound, uh, what I'm going to call the HW praise and worship sound, um, and, and I'm going to show you how you can do that really quick with the Line 6 uh, Helix LT. Okay, so first things first, uh, you can see my Helix here hopefully, and uh, uh, it's pretty intuitive. First thing I'm going to do is the Helix is going to allow us to uh, put in two separate signal paths if I want. I could put two amps in here. I could do all sorts of stuff. Um, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm actually going to just going to toggle over to this block that has the output of the first signal path. And I'm going to cycle through and change it. I just want one signal path. So I want this signal path up here to just continue to this signal path down here. I'm just trying to run a signal, uh, a simple kind of thing. We're not going to do multi amps or anything. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is choose an amp. Uh, and I'll show you one or two of the amps that are in here. I do have some experience with this unit, so I'm not, um, uh, I'm not coming at this blind. So I, I do kind of know where I'm going to land, but um, there's a lot in here. So I'm going to go to uh, amps and cabs. I'm just using everything stock. No, no outside IRs right now. Um, I don't want the Who Watt 100. I'm going to come down here, and you could use something like a US Deluxe, which is basically a Fender. I'm going to come down here, and um, he here's one that a lot of guys might like, the Essex A15. That's an AC15. Here's the Essex 30. Okay, very nice. Uh, here's AC Fawn normal channel. Here's an AC Fawn Bright. Now I'm actually going to end up right here at one of my favorite sounds in here. It's called the Matchstick Channel One. Obviously, that's a matchless amp. And here's on the bridge. I know a lot of people are digging this amp on here. There's also a channel two. I'm going to go with channel one because I am going to use some uh, some boosts in front of it and stuff. Um, and I'm going to show you what those sound like. So really quickly, that's the amp I want. Um, I'm going to jump all the way over here. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do for reverbs exactly. Um, but, uh, you know, that's something I might dial in if I need, you know, a really like washy verb when I'm there tomorrow. But we'll see. For right now, I'm going to put in a hall. And I'm just going to use this hall. And I'm going to back the mix off just slightly just to give it a good little... I'm going to shorten the decay just a little bit, just to give it a little more generic knot in the in the front sound. And um, boom, there you go. I've got my um, I've got my my reverb right there. Now what I'm going to do is I want to assign that. I want to assign that reverb so I can turn it on and off because um, I may throw another reverb in here. So I'm going to do um, I'm going to throw this verb right here. And to do that, I just touch. I just put my finger. I just sort of touch one of these things, and it brings up a menu. It asks me if I want to assign it there. I don't select, I don't actually push the button down. So I'm going to do it right here on this one. And I'm going to hit OK. And boom, I've got my reverb. It's now foot switchable. So here's my matchless amp. Um, oops, what have I done here? Cancel. OK, so here's my matchless amp uh, with no reverb. 
And now here's my uh, my hall verb. <laughs> I'm going to come over here and I'm going to throw in a compressor and uh, what am I doing? I've got to jump back, I'm going to put it in this block up here and I'm going to go down to dynamics and I'm going to select, uh, there's a deluxe comp, sounds like this. Okay, very nice. Red squeeze. That's obviously a Dynacomp. Um, I'm not quite sure what the deluxe compressor is supposed to be, I could look that up, but it gives us a lot of options. We have a, I think it's, I think it's the Keeley. I think it's like a Keeley compressor. I'm not really sure. Uh, we get threshold ratio, attack release, all that stuff. I don't want all that. Um, I actually really like this LA Studio compressor. I don't know what that's modeled after, um, but it's really it's really nice. I just like it, the preset that Line 6 is built in here. I really dig that. Um, so I'm going to leave that studio compressor there and I'm going to just hold, I'm just going to touch the, um, the helix knob there and now I've got that foot switchable as well. Okay, obviously um, it's not praise and worship unless we have delay, right? So I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to go back in front of my reverbs and I'm only going to have two delays. This is just my go-to patch. Um, and so I'm going to, uh, first I'll put in my dotted eighth uh, corner, sort of a standard in, 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 in praise and worship. You really can't have a... It's not worship music unless you've got a dotted eighth delay. That's... I think we can all agree on that. Okay, anyway. I'm just kidding. Um, there's something in here called the Adriatic delay. That's pretty cool. Here's the Adriatic delay. Okay, and that's pretty cool. Um, and I didn't have that tapped into anything, uh, you know, kind of uh, any time signature there. So what I can do is set that to, um, I'm going to set that to a dotted eighth, like I said, and I can tap in. Okay, so that's sort of cool. I'm just going to bring the feedback a little bit, and uh, I'm not going to get too much into it. You can assign parameters and stuff to the foot switch, uh, or to the, to the expression pedal here, which I probably will do, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but anyway, I want to come here, and this is the sound I want, um, and so I'm going to assign that right here. So boom, I've got, I've got my delay right there. Now I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to put in something a little less washy for like when I just maybe want to be doing some rhythm stuff or just something a little more um, simple. Um, and I'm going to come down. I like this this thing called Elephant Man. It's obviously the deluxe memory man uh, from Electro Harmonics and elephants have good memories and I think that's kind of why uh, why we're doing that. Um, hopefully I wasn't in the way there. Sorry with my guitar. Um, so basically there you go. I've got my delay. Uh, I've got a couple delays here and uh, oh I've got to assign this. Uh, I want that elephant man right there. And uh, boom. How's that? I've got two delays, foot switchable. So again, here's my sound dry. Oop. Here's my verb. I'm going to add the reverb in. And now here I'm going to throw in kind of my, uh, just my, my less delay-y sound.
talk about some drives here. Um, so basically, I'm going to come back up near the compressor, and um, I'm going to add in my first drive. Now, my first drive, uh, I'm going to go to Distortion, uh, which is a terrible name, by the way. Line 6, we just call this Overdrive. Like, what year is this? It's not Distort. I know there's distortions in here, and it's a, and then, you know, hard clipping, soft clipping, but just call these overdrives. Distortion's not really a word we use in a lot of music. We don't, we don't say, hey, what kind of distortion are you using? We're talking about praise and worship. Um, so anyway, the Minotaur is obviously a Klon. Um, I think it's a no-brainer. We should use one of those, uh, especially with this style amp. Um, I'm going to bring, oh boy, oh boy, I just selected. Uh, now I see this a little bit drawback of the unit. I tapped, I just touched that and it jumped to that effect and I started editing it. And uh, luckily I knew what that was. Anyway, I'm gonna jump back up to my Minotaur. You just gotta be careful not to tap these things. And I think you wouldn't normally have it on a table like I do. But anyway, um, I'm gonna remove this, I'm gonna move this gain down pretty low on the Minotaur. Um, I'm gonna put the tone kind of high because that's how I run a Klon. Uh, with a, I feel like transparency in the tones around, around uh, six or seven, what this would call six or seven. Um, and then I'm just gonna balance out the level and since I ran the tone pretty high, I'm going to bring that down slightly. Um, and then I'm going to assign that uh, to right here. Boom. I'm going to assign it. So here's my sound with it off with, uh, with a little uh, eighth delay. Now some of you might be thinking, HW, that's a pretty dirty sound to begin with. Um, and that's just because I'm really slamming it on the bridge pickup, and this is kind of an overdriven amp anyway. But if I if I relax a little bit and I don't pound so hard, and I switch like a single coil, getting ready to go though that's just the amp that's the amp sim I chose um, and that's kind of how I'm gonna play it tomorrow but anyway um, let's throw on that Minotaur and um, and do I have this on yeah I want that I want that that studio compressor on and I want to throw on the Minotaur and here's how that's gonna sound uh, first without it now with it That sounds pretty good to me. I love that as like a pushed uh, kind of rhythm sound. And I'm just going to add one more um, overdrive over here. Um, I think life is really not complete um, unless we have a TS, a Scream 808 as they call it. Um, and so that's what I want. And so I'm going to come right down here. I'm going to assign it. Uh, it's on the stock setting right now. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> Anyway, here, here's how it sounds, the matchless without it. Here's how it sounds with it. Here's all those together. Okay, so yeah, maybe that'll happen tomorrow. I don't know. This and screamer sound sounds pretty good. Um, I would lower the gain a bit and kind of almost use it similar to the way I'm using the Minotaur or the Klon, uh, whatever you want to call it. I'll put the gain at four, a little more gain. Um, I might not run the tone so high. I'll leave the level where it was at. Um, but that's just two great things in here um, that I'm going to use tomorrow. This right here, what I have right here, I could use this tomorrow. Um, I might come in and play a clean sound like this. Uh, you know, do something like... Now that's just compressor. That's um, a Memory Man style 
um, eighth delay, uh, yeah, quarter, I'm sorry, eighth note delay, and, uh, and some hall verb. Um, I could add some other stuff, which I will, like maybe I'm going to get to a second chorus um, and I'll have a tremolo in there. So right here, I'm just going to, after my dries, before the amp, I think I'm going to add the tremolo. I could add it after. That's a cool thing it lets you do here. But um, let's just try, let's try this harmonic tremolo. That's a cool one. And uh, I'm going to make the speed... Uh, and how do I like this beat? I think I want sixteenths. Yeah, that'll work. It's a little warbly, and I could um, I could change the intensity. And uh, let's see what else we have in here. Yeah, mix. Oh well, the mix is at a hundred. This is why I might actually take this mix down a bit and that could give a cool sound yeah I think you get rid of what you don't want ah you see I did it again line six you know it, it's easy to do it's a cool feature but you just tap it with your hand and it, it jumped me over to this dotted eighth and that's not where I want to be and I, I didn't even assign that other effect yet so uh, you know hey nothing's perfect uh, be aware of that. You actually can turn that feature off. But anyway, I think really quick here, what we're doing is we're 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 putting in some really good sounds um, and stuff. I'm I'm really going to use tomorrow. And that's a cool. Uh, I think that's a cool trim. I'm going to assign that trim. So here's what I've got right here. I've got my normal sound, and this is probably as, like, I'm probably not going to play with no delay tomorrow at any point, um, but this is what I'm going to play. That tone right there and this, this one, excuse me, that will serve as my cleanish sound tomorrow. Um, and then I will throw on these other pieces as I see fit. Um, if I want a dotted eighth, you know, I'm going to do that. So really cool, from there I might uh, use the Minotaur uh, like this. The touch sensitivity in this unit is different. I won't say it's not there. It's not like a tube amp. It's just not. Um, it's like something else. It's digitally in a way, but, but that's okay. Um, you know, I can do this. There's some sensitivity there, um, but anyway, and then if I really want to go for like a lead or something, um, then I'll come down here and I'll probably throw on uh, the screamer on top of all that, and you know, that'll give me um, kind of a really, you know. I don't know when I'm going to use that. Um, It'll be a line or something, you know.
Okay, so I uh, made the laser a little much, and and you know what? Um, at, the more I think about it, I might change that eighth to a quarter and have a quarter and a dotted eighth. Or I could throw in another delay over here. Um, or here I've got um, my cool tremolo sound uh, that I, I like a lot, so I might try that. And so I'll use, I'll use that, that at a bridge or a, a verse two or something. Cool. Um, this is what I'm going to use tomorrow. I mean, I might throw in another uh, reverb here or something that would, um, uh, you know, allow me to really get pretty washy. Uh, but I've got two delays. I've got two little boost kind of drivey things, uh, a Klon and a, uh, a, a Tube Screamer. And um, I've got my compressor that's going to stay on. My verb's probably going to stay on unless I add another verb. And I might just add it on top. I might not even turn my first verb off. But I'm really going to use this tomorrow. I'm going to try the Helix out. I will um, report back if I make any big edits, like, like it worked terribly. Um, but for me, this is kind of how I would set up my board, uh, mostly. And what I kind of would put in a timeline and a big sky and stuff. And um, obviously I'd have some more options in there. But this would be the stuff that I'd, I'd want. Anyway, HW, uh, thanks so much, guys, for watching. Uh, please hit subscribe. Appreciate it.